On today's Winning Cures Everything, we're talking about Colorado potentially leaving the Pac-12 for the Big 12 and what that might mean going forward for the other Pac-12 teams, other conferences, and more. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. All right. Welcome back. It's the Thursday, July 27th edition of the show. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. This is Winning Cures Everything, where we talk college football news, rumors, and more all year round. Of course, the show brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. And yes, I am still going to get out previews for all of the other conferences that we have not hit yet. Uh, it might not be as detailed as I initially planned. Um, look, before we dive into this Colorado mess, let me let me explain to you why you haven't seen much of me here lately. Uh, first off, my daughter is headed to college in a few weeks. Uh, second, my wife is pregnant. Uh, the baby's due in early September. Third, we started the process of selling our house and buying another one. The process took too long. We ended up backing out. Now we're attempting to get some renovations done at our place before the baby gets here. Uh, number four, uh, my role at my other jobs has changed. It's been into my time to uh, uh, to do Winning Cures Everything stuff, unfortunately. And fifth, uh, my upstairs AC, where my kids' rooms are, went out after one of the massive severe thunderstorms last week. Uh, just got fixed on Tuesday afternoon. So it, it's been a doozy, but I ain't quitting WCE. Yes, you heard correctly. We're having a baby in early September. I'm still going to be doing this show and, of course, the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and, yes, I'll be at Bet Bash in Las Vegas, August 8th through the 11th. If you're going to be in attendance, come say hello. Reach out on Twitter. Again, at GaryWCE. We'll meet up uh, while we're in Vegas. All right. Pac-12 time. Now, you guys knew I was not going to sit on the sidelines for this one. I've been fine letting everyone else discuss talking season for media days, but uh, the Colorado news is big, obviously. At Pac-12 media days last week, Commissioner George Klyovkov made headlines by telling the media that they were not announcing a new media deal on purpose, right? Because they wanted the focus to be on football during media days. Now, he had a point. There's a lot of optimism that the Pac-12 uh, could be the most exciting conference in college football this season. But his phrase, on purpose, uh, led him to, or I guess led reporters to press him on whether or not they have a deal done, and all he could really muster up was that the reporter was reading too much into that. Now remember, this is a man that is a documented liar, as FOIA requests proved uh, when they found his comments, you know, about telling the Big 12 no to a merger. They, they found those comments were actually backwards. The Big 12 told the Pac-12, no, we couldn't do that. Uh, but still, you had Utah AD Mark Harlan uh, talking later to the media, reaffirming his school's commitment to the Pac-12. He said, I think our words and actions speak for themselves. We're a proud member of this conference and look forward to its future success. Now, Colorado, on the other hand, acted a little differently. Of course, AD Rick George got on the stage for about 15 minutes, answered a few questions, and then rushed away, avoiding uh, media questions and telling the assembled media that he had a flight to catch. Now, CU Chancellor Phil DeStefano, he told the Denver Post last Wednesday, July 19th, that clarity on the new media partnerships was expected to be presented to league chancellors and presidents by Klyovkov on Thursday, the day before Pac-12 Media Day. DeStefano said in a phone call with the Post, he said, I'm eagerly awaiting to hear what the commissioner has to say. But at this point, the 10 schools are staying together and awaiting a message from the commissioner. Now, he also added that he had yet to see uh, a final number on media rights from Klyovkov. That's why we're meeting. Colorado wanted an update. They wanted to see numbers. It's been a year. I don't blame them. And now, I guess we can assume that the message was not good enough or may not have been a message at all. They may have gotten no numbers. It doesn't sound like there was really any kind of an update uh, for the schools. Now, until this, think about this, until this Pac-12 mess, like how often did you really hear from school presidents and chancellors. I mean, seriously, could you even name any of them besides the ones in the Pac-12 that have been talking to the media? Like, the Pac-12 leaders have been trying to calm the media firestorm because Klyovkov hasn't been, you know, publicly talking to anybody. And time and time again, these school leaders have really been made to look like fools as they've consistently towed the company line. 
you know, a deal is coming soon. Uh, a couple more weeks. Last week, it was the room has shifted. We're making great progress, right? Uh, last week, I mean, there was just an incredible statement that the longer the conference waits, the better the options that are coming to the negotiating table. And of course, there's always the sources that kept saying that it is likely the Pac-12 media deal will be bigger than the Big 12s. I don't think that's going to happen now. Like, Colorado finally had enough. So the CU Board of Trustees had a meeting last night, Wednesday night. They've had multiple over the past few months. Uh, Only this time, word started to spread once it finished, right? Pete Thamel reported at 5 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday, July 26th. Make sure we get our dates right. He said, sources, Colorado is in discussions about a move to the Big 12, and the school has just completed a board meeting and scheduled another for tomorrow to discuss the move. The Big 12 is also holding a president's meeting tonight where there's expected to be an expansion update. So, of course, things progress through the evening. Brett McMurphy from the Action Network tweeted out, Colorado leaving Pac-12 to return to Big 12 in 2024, sources told Action Network. Uh, CU will receive a full Big 12 share that's $31.7 million from ESPN Fox Media Deal. Buffs left because of Big 12 stability and Pac-12's uncertainty, sources said. Announcement Thursday. I'm recording this on Thursday morning. It's 10.23 a.m. Central Time right now as I'm recording this. So finally, on the Big 12 side, Thamel again reported at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, sources, the Big 12's presidents and chancellors voted unanimously Wednesday night on a conference call to accept Colorado as a new member. Colorado still has not formally applied for Big 12 membership, which is expected to happen tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow, now today. (laughs) The new Board of Regents meeting for Colorado is scheduled for 3 p.m., Mountain time. So that'll be well after I release this video. Uh, It's categorized as a call to order with the subject athletics operations, and the type of meeting is called action. Now, it's a public meeting, and there's going to be a vote on the matter. So let's say that this is done. Colorado is going to the Big 12. That makes 13 Big 12 schools and nine Pac 12 schools. Uh, What could this one move mean for realignment elsewhere? I've got five scenarios I'm going to talk about today, starting with this one right here. Scenario one, Colorado is the only Pac-12 school that leaves. Does San Diego State just slide in as the 10th team for the Pac-12? Remember, they needed to be added as a Pac-12 member by June 30th to avoid a significant buyout to the Mountain West. If San Diego State leaves before July 1st, 2024, or it might be 2025 at this point, I should probably have done some research, uh, they're going to owe $34 million. I would imagine that they'll expect the Pac-12 to pay that, or at least part of it. The issue is, I don't know that either party would be willing to do that, considering what their financial situations look like. Mountain West schools make about $4 million per year in their current deal, uh, which runs through 2025-2026. If the Pac-12 can't wait around on San Diego State, they're going to lose their handle on Southern California altogether. But they could call on SMU. Now, Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF, they're paying the AAC a buyout of $18 million dollars, over a 14-year span to head to the Big 12. SMU could probably pay that in one lump sum. Not to mention, it brings in a more football-hungry region to consume Pac-12 content, as, you know, it's right in the Big 12's backyard. Uh, Everybody knows about Texas football. Now remember, Colorado leaving is not the same as USC. The Buffs' value to TV networks isn't near the Trojans and the Bruins. Matchups like Washington traveling to SMU or SMU traveling to Oregon... Those can be sold as exciting to the public, uh, especially with the transfer portal work that, you know, Rhett Lashley has done this season. So let's not just assume that San Diego State is the school to replace Colorado. Of course, the Pac-12 could always just roll with nine schools for one or two, uh, two years. It's it, This will be apples to oranges. But Conference USA is playing with only nine conference members this year while they're waiting for Kennesaw State to join FBS next season. Now, of course... Moving away from the Pac-12, let's talk about the Big 12. Uh, we got to talk about what they would do because they're not just going to stand still with 13 teams. All of the Big 12 brass wanted Colorado back. Your mark went ahead and got it done. Does he then use that and say, hey, I got this thing done for you. Now, trust me, let's go get UConn and build this basketball thing out You know, towards the Northeast. Do I think UConn makes sense for the Big 12? Not at all. Storrs, Connecticut is 500 miles away from West Virginia. That's the closest Big 12 uh, rival, Big 12 conference member, uh, to Storrs, Connecticut. 
And sure, you can say the same thing about UCF being so far from the next closest Big 12 team, nearly 1,000 miles to Houston, 900 miles to Cincinnati, but Storrs isn't exactly the recruiting footprint that Florida is, at least when it comes to football. It makes a ton of sense, in my opinion, for the Big 12 to look at Memphis as the 14th team, regionally, logistically, etc. It, it makes sense. You get a key spot in the SEC footprint. It helps the basketball brand as well. It doesn't diminish you as much in football as, you know, maybe UConn would. It's easier on travel. Honestly, more people watch Memphis football than UConn. So it is a bigger sell to networks going forward. But I do believe that the Big 12 is going to sit for a bit and try and pry one more Pac-12 school away. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see. You know, your mark is a Northeast guy. He worked for the Nets, so his... His fascination with UConn, especially after they won another basketball national title, it's pretty easy to understand. All right, scenario two. Arizona gets antsy, and they decide to join Colorado in the Big 12. That leaves only eight Pac-12 schools, and it boosts the Big 12 to an even 14. I think your mark's goal is 16. Uh, there's been reports that say that 14 is, is what they're looking for, but my, my guess is it's going to be 16. Uh, and that way they can match what the SEC and the Big Ten have currently. Now, from everything I've heard, Colorado was the primary goal because it would start the domino effect. But the biggest priority for the Big 12 has been Arizona, partly because of their basketball status. I mean, just imagine this conference, right? Kansas, Baylor, uh, Houston, and then you got Arizona in the same basketball league. If you get Arizona, that eliminates the need for UConn, which, as I just mentioned, it, that's been rumored as a school your mark has, has really had his eye on. Now, in this situation, the Pac-12 could call up SMU, and then they could possibly afford to wait on San Diego State, which, you know, we'd have to see if they'd be willing to listen to the Pac-12 again. And, you know, after it looks like they got left at the altar in earlier expansion talks with Klyovkov, who knows, right? Does San Diego State just say, eh, forget it, we're not interested anymore? But either way, that would put the Pac-12 back at 10 schools if, if everybody else stands firm with the conference. Losing Arizona hurts basketball, but they're another program that has not been great in football in a long time. In fact, SMU and San Diego State are probably an upgrade football-wise, uh, maybe not to a national audience. Uh, regardless, the Pac-12 improves their football product with this while still only having 10 mouths to feed instead of 12 if they had expanded earlier. Now, on the Big 12 side, this helps replace Texas as a basketball power. It helps your mark continue to sell as basketball brand, and you can obviously sell football matchups like Arizona TCU, uh, Arizona Oklahoma State. It's a, it kind of fits the footprint, right? I, I think it would make sense. Scenario three. The rest of the four corner schools determine that the Pac-12 is falling apart, and they decide to join Colorado, leaving only six Pac-12 teams. Now, with Colorado leaving, uh, the other Pac-12 schools realize the inevitable, you know, that their conference is not long for this world, right? <laughs> Arizona is the first to split after Colorado. Uh, the leaders at Arizona State, they're not about to let the Wildcats get one over on them, so they apply for membership too. And with the Pac-12 now down to seven teams, Utah decides to join their forced rival, Colorado, in the Big 12 too. And that makes the Holy War of BYU, or the Holy War with BYU, a conference championship game again. Maybe not championship, but you, you get the point. Uh, the last time it was a conference game, uh, was a 17-16 to Utah win on November 27th, 2010. Now, the Big 12 would then sit at 16 teams. That's the num that, I think that's the number that your mark initially wanted, and it leaves the Pac-12 with only six teams. You got Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State, Stanford, and Cal. Eventually, Oregon and Washington are going to be picked up by somebody. And they're too valuable to be left out there without a conference. But this really puts a strain on them to get something done. Like, it would be odd to see them in a league like the Mountain West, but that might be all that's left if they don't jump to the Big 12 and, you know, the Big 10 doesn't want to bring them in right now. As far as the Big 12 is concerned, 16 teams, you create multiple rivalries. Uh, I mentioned the Holy War. You got the duel in the desert. Of course, Arizona and Arizona State play for the Territorial Cup. Uh, the forced Utah versus Colorado rivalry, among others. Utah TCU is appetizing uh, from their days back in the Mountain West, etc. cetera. Uh, this scenario, I think, would be the death knell for the Pac-12. I don't think you can survive with only six members and just trying to fill in the gaps with AAC and Mountain West teams. I don't think. But obviously, I mean, we'll have to see. Scenario four. 
Colorado joining the Big 12 could open the Big 10 to talking with Oregon and Washington again. Now, Tony Petiti, the commissioner of the Big 10, he was asked at Big 10 Media Days about expanding beyond 16 teams. His response was, all the direction I'm getting is to focus on USC and UCLA. I'm not getting direction about anything else. Now, to me, that sounds pretty firm that they are not expanding. Uh, but one of the rumors surrounding them, at least while Kevin Warren was still the commissioner, uh, has long been that the Big Ten did not want to take any of the Pac-12 schools because they did not want the death of the Pac-12 to be on their hands. They, they wanted to avoid any kind of litigation from the Pac-12 that may come from the death of the conference. Uh, but if Colorado leaves and there's no new media rights deal for the remaining Pac-12 schools, or at least not a good enough deal for schools like Oregon uh, or Washington to stick around, then does the Big Ten look at expanding their footprint with the biggest brands on the West Coast? It would make a lot of sense. You know, there, there are rumors out there. USC has told the Big Ten that they don't want Oregon in the conference, I'm assuming for recruiting reasons, but back to why it makes sense. I've said on the show before, there's plenty of reasons for the Big Ten to expand to 18 teams. The travel from L.A. to Eugene is still over 800 miles, but it's at least in the ta- uh, same time zone, right? Same for L.A. to Seattle, which is over 1,100 miles. L.A. Uh, to the next closest Big Ten team, that's Lincoln, Nebraska. It's 1,500 miles away, and you have to go through two time zones. Both Oregon and Washington are closer and in the same time zone, not to mention you would then have the four biggest brands on the West Coast to help secure the late-night window for Fox, BTN, etc., right? On top of that... Let's toss in the fact that you could probably get them for a discount. Maybe half of a share, something along those lines. Uh, Maybe maybe less than half of a share, even for the first however many years. Because what else are they going to do? They could work their way up towards the next media deal to where they could become a full member. Now, this all gets blown up if the Big Ten doesn't want to go crazy, if they don't want to move to 20 or 24 or whatever, because... I think they're still interested in ACC teams and Notre Dame, et cetera. But regardless, if you've got these two big West Coast brands sitting out there and you can get them on the cheap, especially at the beginning, I think it makes sense. All right, scenario five. Oregon and Washington realize that the Big Ten is going to focus on ACC additions down the road and perhaps Notre Dame. And the Ducks and the Huskies are the ones that end up joining the Big 12 with Colorado. Now, sure, it looks crazy when you first think about it, but if the goal is athletic stability, the Big 12 is just about the only option so long as those schools believe that the Pac-12 is not going to be around for long. Oregon to BYU, they already travel to Utah. Oregon to Colorado, that happens frequently anyway. They played a game in Atlanta last year. Uh, Before that, they played at Ohio State. In 2019, they played Auburn in Arlington, Texas. They've done this for years. Yes, it would make the road games more difficult traveling to UCF some years, to West Virginia some years. But is it better than sticking in the Pac-12 where, you know, the athletic program would be hemorrhaging money to try and stay competitive nationally while the media deal brings in significantly less than all the other power conferences? I'm sure that there are some of you thinking, wait, Gary, hold on. Oregon and Washington could run the Pac-12 and get the auto bid to the CFP every year. They could bring in more money that way. Eh, eh, eh. Let me remind you, the six conference champ auto bid stuff uh, was only for 2024 and 25. There has not been a deal made for 26 and beyond just yet. So do you wait around and potentially lose a spot in a more secure athletic conference, just hoping that the playoff committee throws you a bone? I, I don't think so. It would not surprise me to see Oregon and Washington reach out. I, I think a lot of these Pac-12 teams could end up reaching out. Obviously, we'll see. All right, at the end of the day, there are a number of ways this can go. The Big 12 assumed that getting Colorado would begin a domino effect. Right now, we're just waiting to see which dominoes are falling where. Look, that's going to do it for today's show. I don't want to be too long. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and, of course, for being patient with me while I try and get everything back on track. Remember, uh, this is a one-man show. I, I research, film, edit, create the thumbnails, write the description, everything on this show. It's a lot of fun, uh, but there are times when life gets in the way. So the more you watch, the more you subscribe, the bigger chances that I can actually hire a team to help me do all this stuff, which is the goal one day, right? Uh, So, you know, make sure and like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it out. Uh, Oh, toss in your comments. I want to hear your thoughts on all this. What do you think is the most likely scenario? That's what I want to hear. 
You guys tell me what you think is going to happen. Uh, remember the show brought to you by BetUS. It's America's favorite online sports book. Uh, there's a link in the description for you to get uh, 50 bucks. Like you just you click that link, you get 50 bucks to bet with no deposit required. So make sure that you get signed up over there. Also, make sure to subscribe to the BetUS College Football Show. We have done three early preview shows for games happening early in the season. So make sure you check those out as well. Next Wednesday, we're going through some team previews. We're going to do Colorado, Georgia, Alabama, uh, LSU, Clemson, etc. Right, some some of the bigger brands going over some of their win totals and uh, and kind of previewing them for the upcoming season. So once we get into August, it is every Wednesday from here on out. And once we get to the week before week zero, it is every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if there's anything that you want me to talk about on this show, Winning Cures Everything, hit me up on Twitter, at GaryWCE, or of course you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. <laughs> I'm done. I'm tired. Uh, but man, this Colorado stuff is big, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be fun. All right. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And I hope all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.